Well, folks, today we have some big news coming in for Nintendo Switch. We have the VP of Marketing from Xbox trying to dismiss Nintendo Switch as a console. Really strange in there. We have an update on the Unity situation. If you recall, we talked about that uh, last week. So we have an update about that. Oh, we're not done because, folks, guess what? We have some performance updates for Mortal Kombat 1 on Nintendo Switch. And this last story, <sighs> how do I describe this last one? Well, how about an update for the next... Xenoblade game. Oh, 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 baby! What are we doing? We're talking about news, everyone. So, hey, why don't you go ahead and drop a like on this video if you enjoy it and find it informative. Subscribe to the channel as we're on a road to 150,000 subscribers. And go ahead and smash that bell icon so you're notified of all future uploads. All right, folks, let's get into the news. <laughs> So our first story deals with the VP of Marketing for Xbox, Aaron Greenberg. So I don't know if you guys heard today, a bunch of emails sort of got leaked out there. I don't know if it's leaked. They're more like officially released from the Microsoft versus FTC. And the big thing that we already talked about in its, in its own you know, standalone video earlier was about the Nintendo Switch 2, right? About the power or the potential power, yada, yada, yada. I'll put a link down to that video if you want to go check that out. But actually, that's not the only time Nintendo Switch came up in these emails. Uh, well, in fact, here's one from 2019. In this email, the VP of Marketing, Aaron Greenberg, tried to get people at Xbox to stop calling Nintendo Switch a console. You know, because it has Minecraft and Outer Worlds and Ori and more. Hey, just because it has those, can we not call this thing a console? You're seeing it right on screen right now. It's pretty crazy. Now, this did come from the publicly documented emails from the FTC versus Microsoft case. Uh, and, of course, we know Phil Spencer did not go along with this plan. He's actually been calling it a console this entire time, including since 2019. And it's really interesting. M Microsoft actually argued in the FTC versus Microsoft case that... The Nintendo Switch was indeed a console. Of course, being a handheld doesn't really make you a console. And Nintendo themselves has called it a home console, which is, you know, I guess a subset of being a video game console. They've been calling it a home console since day one, and it's still listed as a home console on their website. So even though the VP of marketing, Aaron Greenberg, was like, hey, we should separate this out, all he was really worried about was from a marketing perspective because some Xbox games are on the platform. They wanted to clarify that this isn't a platform that competes with Xbox, but then obviously we know in the FTC case, they argued it is a platform that competes with Xbox. So look, obviously some people take this as Microsoft must have had an about face. It's important to remember that Aaron Greenberg was just making a suggestion. He wasn't saying this has to be done. And Phil Spencer has never followed this. He's literally called Switch a console for years. So I don't know, it's much to do about nothing in the end, but it is interesting to see that someone pretty high up at Microsoft at one point wanted to act like Nintendo Switch just doesn't count, which kind of weird considering how close Microsoft and Nintendo have been. So next up, we have an update on the Unity story. For those that aren't aware, Unity basically updated how they were gonna handle revenue sharing with developers last week, and it was a firestorm. They're taking money off of installs. Even if you got a free-to-play game, hey, we're still gonna charge you every time someone installs, or at least the first time they install. I don't know, it was sort of a hot mess. We have more details on that in our other video that I can link down below. But there's an update to this situation, well, over the last 24 hours, because Unity put out this statement on Twitter. We have heard you. We apologize for the confusion and angst the runtime fee policy we announced on Tuesday caused. We are listening, talking to our team members, community, customers, and partners, and we'll make changes to the policy. We will share an update in a couple of days. Thank you for your honest and critical feedback. Of course, most people just assume they're not really apologizing. They're just saying, we're sorry that you're confused. People don't really seem to be confused. It's pretty black and white with their policy state. There were some people going a bit too far, acting like it was every install that was going to do it. But the funny thing is, Unity's also like, this only affects 10% of our customers. This is what they were saying earlier. And it's like, yeah, but that 10% of the amount of people that are developing for Unity is 21 thousand developers that could be literally out of business as of 2024. So that's not a small number in context to everything. So I don't know. In the end, I don't know what's going to happen with Unity. What I can say is I do think a lot of indie studios are already going to be moving on to other engines because 
they obviously can't trust Unity to sort of do this again. And Unity's only backtracking because their stock is tanking. And when your stock is tanking, you're like, oh, this was a bad decision. We just lost billions of dollars on our market cap. What did we do? Whoopsies. Yeah, it's... It, look, if their market cap didn't sink, I doubt this this statement would even come out. And the only change I think most people want to see is them rescinding the policy altogether. And they don't look like they're going to be doing that. So who really knows? I think they're trying to sweep this under the rug and just hope people forget about it by making this statement that means nothing. Next up, we need to talk about Mortal Kombat 1 because it's getting a bad rap on Nintendo Switch. And it turns out that bad rap might not be justified. There was leaked screenshots and a few video clips last week and people were just trashing the Nintendo Switch version thinking, man, this is such a bad port. How disappointing is this after Mortal Kombat 11? Well, today we now have a comparison, which you can look at right now, uh, of all the different graphics on all the different systems, including Steam Deck and Nintendo Switch. Uh, this was done by El Ananista Debits. I, I don't I don't think that's what they call their channel anymore but anyways that's the name of their youtube channel and look it looks like the game's actually pretty good so load times are pretty long which is one big sort of caveat to the nintendo switch version of mortal kombat 1r there's some pretty long load times but outside of a couple graphical glitches and most of them are actually quite hilarious they're not game breaking and Switch is obviously downgraded in all aspects visually compared to other versions, but the game does hit 60 FPS pretty consistently. It does have occasional 5 FPS drops, but nothing too groundbreaking, and it's perfectly playable. Most people that actually are playing the early access version right now are saying that, hey, the, po the port that everyone was trying to make look really bad last week actually is pretty good and that saber interactive did a really good job with this port and it's on par with mortal kombat 11 so it seemed to be a much to do about nothing and not really to anyone's surprise there's a lot of people that are just praying for the downfall of nintendo and nintendo switch and i think a lot of the people spreading this stuff uh, was just you know naysaying to try to make nintendo look bad and make this game look bad when it turns out it's just fine on Switch, just the way Mortal Kombat 11 was. So yeah, Saber Interactive, I'm sorry if you've been taking a lot of crap. It kind of looks like you did your job. So yeah, just haters getting popular and it spreads to legit consumers and the consumers start to be concerned. I'm here to tell you, if you wanted to buy Mortal Kombat 1 on Switch and you enjoy Mortal Kombat 11, you should feel fully confident in making that purchase. And our last story actually deals with Xenoblade Chronicles because the composer of the series did an interview and while he's really thankful to be done working on it and it was a very hard thing for him to do, he also talked at length, well, I guess a little bit, about the next Xenoblade Chronicles game. So here's what we got for our notes here. The Xenoblade composer all but confirms the series has had one point of closure with three and the DLC and that the series will have a fresh start moving forward that he's pretty excited about. Obviously, he's also glad to take a break after putting his all into the closure of the original Xenoblade Chronicles trilogy. There is a strong sentiment amongst gamers that Xenoblade Chronicle 3's soundtrack got completely snubbed at the Game Awards, with most wondering if a majority of the voters even had a chance to play the game, let alone listen to the soundtrack. Obviously, as a Nintendo channel, we have our bias, and the award last year was given to God of War Ragnarok. Now, to be fair, if you sit back and listen to the God of War Ragnarok soundtrack, it actually is really, really good. So, I don't think there is a shame in losing to it, but Xenoblade Chronicles 3 soundtrack is definitely right there. It would be interesting to me if Jeff Keighley would show us how things rank, like here's what wins, but what just missed the cut and almost won. It would be kind of neat to see that. Maybe that's a suggestion Jeff Keighley can do, not to announce it during the show, but afterwards show the order in which things ranked in the voting. That would just be good to know if their favorite actors or soundtracks or visuals or whatever ended up actually ranking pretty good or if they were towards the bottom of the vote. Maybe he doesn't do it because he wants to avoid the controversy with it. Beats me. Anyways, guys, that's it. So yeah, the Xenoblade composer, you know, you saw the little snippet from his interview. Yeah, I look guys, He's basically saying that the new Xenoblade game is going to come out and it's going to be fresh and he's really excited for it. It's a fresh take. They're moving on from what Xenoblade 1, 2, and 3 was. I don't know what that fresh take is going to be, but I'm excited to see it. Look, Monolith Soft just makes good games. Great games, if we're really honest. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel RoboJets from Nintendo Prime. It's been a lot of fun putting this video together. A little rough around the edges. Uh, you know, that's what happens when we're dealing with some stuff in this world that's around me. Look at this. This is real.
This is real. I can touch it. I can touch it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.